us on today. Just to be able to exalt and magnify the name of the Lord. Is there anybody in the house that's going to magnify the Lord with me and yeah. going to help me exalt his name? So let's exalt his name together. What is his name? Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay. Jesus. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I want you to turn with me to the book of Matthew on this morning. Just want to bring greetings to our family online that's listening in. Those that have chosen to take this morning, spend their day with us, their morning with us in worship. I believe that if you continue to pray, if you continue to lift up your head unto the hills from what cometh to your help. The Lord is going to send help from the sanctuary. Amen. And he's going to strengthen you out of time. Matthew, the 11th chapter. Starting at the 23rd verse. Thou Capernaum, which art exalted unto heaven, shall be brought down to hell. For if the mighty works which have been done in thee had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say unto you that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for thee. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hid these things from the wise and prudent, and hath revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son. And he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me. I want y'all to hear this. Jesus is speaking. He says, come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart. And ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy. And my burden is light. Oh, praise the name of our God. As my heads together, Lord God, our Savior and our deliverer, we thank you. Thank you for another opportunity to come before you on today and to gather in this place with your children and those that are listening online, Lord God, wherever they may find themselves. Thank you for causing them to have a desire to, to just come and to worship and to exalt your most holy and righteous name. Oh God, we praise you for being the I am that I am. We thank you for being the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last he that was and he is and it is to come. We thank you, Lord God, for your power, for you speak, and things, Lord God, have to come, Lord God, together. Things, Lord God, are moved out of our way. Things, Lord God, have to submit themselves under the power of your word. Thank you now, Lord God, for giving us another opportunity, another day, another chance just to come into your presence and to feel the anointing and the power of God moving in our lives. Oh God, we submit ourselves to you now because we recognize that we are just flesh and blood, that we are frail, that we were made from the dust. But oh God, you are eternal, you are everlasting. Oh God, in thee, hallelujah, we have hope. In you, we put our trust and we thank you now. Thank you, oh God, because we know that salvation only comes through you. Thank you for the work of Jesus Christ, for the death, for the burial, and for the resurrection of our Christ. That was, Lord God, given as a gift unto us that we may have life 
and that we may be connected with the Redeemer and the Savior of mankind. Oh God, now wash us in your blood, cleanse us, yeah. and make us whole so that when we stand before you at all, oh God, we will declare not guilty because of what Jesus has done in our lives. Unify us now with your spirit, make us one, oh God, hallelujah, in the body of Christ. And we'll be careful to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. And everybody will say, in Jesus' name, Jesus. amen. 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 You may be seated at this time. Again, it is a wonderful thing just to be with the saints of God, just to hear about His greatness and about His mighty works. The Word of God is good all by itself. Amen. If you let it, I tell you what, it'll bring balance in your life. If you let it, it'll bring victory in your life. If you let it, it'll take the darkness and turn it into light in your life. It'll take what is broken and it'll fix it in your life. Somebody tell them hallelujah. So that's why we have the reading of the word. And then prayer is a necessity as we communicate with God over the things that have transpired in our day. As we tell him about how much we love him and how much we bless and exalt his name for the mighty acts that he has performed in our life from day to day. For certainly it is by him that we move, that we have the ability to breathe and even exist. Anybody know that you're existing because of God? Just tell me, thank you. I don't ever want to believe that I just came from nothing. I believe there's too much intelligence in the world to believe that I was structured out of just of mishaps. Praise the name of our God. I believe that there's a structured God. Yeah. A design, an organized and structured creation. And so I thank him for that. So at this time, I'm not going to hold you, but we're going to ask our praise team to come and to lead us in worship. But I want you to remember this, that we are not here to be entertained. Ah, look at your neighbor and say, we're not here to be entertained. But we have come to praise and to magnify the Lord. Together, in the precious name of Jesus Christ. As our praise team comes, let's receive them with a hearty amen as we clap our hands and give God the Lord. Thank you. 
So just if you know the words, go ahead and sing it with us. Hallelujah. Give praises to our King of
I said, God is great. Yes. Yes. Such a wonderful Yes, sir. Yes, I said, He is such a wonderful sir. of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, thy labor, thy patience, how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not, has found themselves, found them liars, has borne and has patience, for my name's sake has labored, has not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent, and do the works, the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of his place. Except thou repent. This thou hast, thou hast the deeds of the Nicolaitans which I also hate. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Lord, God, our Savior, our Deliverer, we thank you. Thank you for this word that was written to our midst on this morning. And we understand that if we are to come into the knowledge of truth, if we are to come to an understanding of the meaning of your spirit, Lord God, that we must submit ourselves unto thee. We must trust, Lord God, that your word is enough to save and deliver, to open up our understanding of what is, or what was, what is, and what is to come. Oh God, hallelujah, show yourself strong in this house. Show yourself, Lord God, mighty unto your children. The God that never fails, we know that you never fail. You never come up short. The promises are sure. So this hour, we just want to exalt your name. Together, we want to praise you in this place. All around the world, Lord God, those that are magnifying you for your goodness, for your mercy, for your compassion, and to humanity. Oh God, just have your way and let your spirit lead us and guide us into all truth. We'll be careful to humble ourselves 
to give you praise now and forever. In Jesus' name it is our prayer. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Let me see it. Here, in this book, when God begins to reveal to John, beloved, sharing with him concerning what was, what is, and what is to come. God who came to the world as the Lamb of God, humbling himself, submitting himself even unto death, allowing humanity to rail on him, to lie against him, to bring false accusations, and then to take him nail him to the cross when he had committed no sin or any wrong or harm against anyone except for the workers of darkness. For he came to reveal unto us our transgressions and our need for God. For certainly it was God in Christ reconciling the world back to himself. For we could not save ourselves from our sins. We could not deliver ourselves from our unrighteousness. Many of us recognize that today. That there are things in our lives that we struggle with. That by our own power, we are unable to overcome. So if we don't have the power to overcome it, we need another source. We need another resource that we can turn to. We need someone that is greater than our sins. So Jesus Christ came to be the one that would take on the sins of the entire world. And we would have an opportunity, like today, to come together as a family in Christ and sit down and hear about his great works and his mighty acts and to rejoice in unity and in harmony together over what he has done, what he is doing, and what he has promised to do in the future. When the era that we are living today, many people are depressed. They are, they are living in fear. They're living in fear because of sickness, disease, plagues, viruses. They're concerned about their well-being, their health. They're concerned about the shift in our society. Concerned whether they'll be able to be financially stable enough. Not only to make it from day to day, but even those that are nearing retirement. Will I be able to survive survive after I finish my secular job or career? Jesus wanted us to know you don't have to worry about these things because I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. But I will be with you until the ends of the world. And when you cannot find strength in yourself, you can always turn to Jesus. Because he has all power in his hand. All authority is in his hand. Jesus is now speaking to John after John has been exiled over to the Isle of Patmos, the Aegean Sea, and here. The Lord begins to unveil who he was, what was to come. John recognized when he looked at him, this is not the same lamb that I saw when he came and he allowed humanity to take his life. But when I look at it now, I see another Christ. I see a Christ that is walking in the middle 
of the candlesticks and that is holding seven stars in his hands. I see a God that is in a standing in authority, in royalty and in power. Amen. See a God that has his hairs that are white as wool and as snow and that his eyes are as flames of fire. Looking at a God, and when I look at his feet, that his feet are like fine brass yes, that have been burned in a furnace. Yep. But when I listen to him talk, his voice sounds like many waters. So, in other words, his countenance is no longer just the countenance like the carpenter's son, but he is a God of power. An authority that rules heaven and earth. Amen. Matter of fact, he spoke of himself and said, I am the first, I am the last. He said, I'm he that liveth and was dead, but I live evermore. Matter of fact, he said, I have the keys of hell and death in my hand. And so you don't even have to worry about the sting of death anymore because I've already taken his sting away. So you don't have to worry about what is to come because Jesus is in control. These particular churches that John is writing to were churches that were active in his day. They were viable churches. But this church that was known as Ephesus was an Orthodox church. They were very structured and lived in accordance to Scripture and to the Word of God. Amen. They believed that they needed to follow whatever the Lord said. We need to live it out. We need to walk it out. We need to have the kind of conversation it says that we are a holy people connected to the throne of glory. And though we are persecuted, though we are, 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 are sought out uh, to be destroyed and our lives to be taken from us, uh, we still have a song down in our souls. We still have peace in our minds. Uh, we still are able to clap our hands and rejoice for the Lord has given unto us the victory. Amen. When I look at the God that I serve, he is not weak, but he is a God that out of his mouth comes a two-edged sword. Amen. He is able to cut asunder everything that is not of God. Goes down to the very joints and the very marrow of the bone. And so when I lean on his word, his word is able to deliver and heal and set me free. Yeah. Oh yes, that the Lord is talking to the church of Ephesus. And he says to them, I'm looking at you and I understand what is going on in your congregation. I know your works and I know your labor. I know that you can't bear them that are evil and that you try them that say that they are messengers of God or apostles and leaders and are not. You found them to be liars. Matter of fact, you have been patient and you have borne the weight of persecution, yet you press forward in the Lord. You don't faint, you don't give up, you don't turn around. Many of us today, when struggles come, we are so ready to give up, throw up our hands, and throw in the towel. Uh, we're not ready to fight through the challenges that we are faced with, or the adversities that we are dealing with, but we are ready to turn around and go back into Egypt which is captivity in our lives. Maybe your Egypt is a little different than my Egypt. 
But whatever held you in captivity, whatever enslaved your life, whatever took away your praise, whatever caused you to have a slave mentality, that becomes your Egypt. Anything that causes you to serve your flesh, anything that causes you to walk after the lust of your eyes or the lust of your flesh or the pride that is in your life is your Egypt. For it will separate you from victory and from the power that God has ordained for us as his children to operate in. It will divide us, praise the Lord, from our God that is able to move mountains, to set the flight, the armies of darkness. But look at here. The Lord says unto them, you have all of these wonderful qualities. But, nevertheless, I've got something against you. Because you have forgotten the importance of building a relationship with the Christ. Oh yes, you've forgotten the importance of building your house upon a sure foundation. And so now you are in relationship with other things that are materialistic. And you have become passionate about your job. You become passionate about your family. Yeah. You become passionate about your hobbies and the things that you find to be more valuable than coming and worshiping and praising in the house of God. You have attached yourself to man or to earthly things. And so now your car is more important than you. Now, praise the Lord, things in your life are more important to you. But God is saying, if you love me, then you're going to keep and honor my word. And not only are you going to honor and keep my word, but you're going to love one another. Uh, because out of the love you have one another for one another, it's going to reveal the fact that I am living and operating in your midst. How can you say that you love me when you can't even love your brother who you can see and that's standing right in front of your face? How can you say that you are part of me and you know that God is love and you can always be looking so mean and bitter and angry with the world and frustrated with everything going on around you and not understand that you need to be filled with compassion and mercy and kindness because out of these things are going to be produced the very qualities and the love and the characteristics of God. Somebody tell me hallelujah. Oh yes, you have to learn how to get back to the basics of, of building a relationship with your Christ. Uh, because in this relationship, uh, you learn how to listen to what your mate or the one that you love is in need of. Uh, God says that, uh, first of all, I want you to learn how to take my yoke upon you and learn of me because my yoke is in easy and my burdens they are light. In other words, I'm going to place you in a position that when you are led by my spirit, you're going to walk in the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding of God. You're going to learn how to present yourself as a living sacrifice that is holy and acceptable unto God. 
God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, I'm not asking anything that you cannot uh, produce, but I'm asking you as you lean and trust in me and operate in my spirit uh, to allow the spirit of God to work in you, both the will and the do of my good pleasure. Instead of uh, uh, operating in your flesh, uh, where you used to lie and curse and cheat and backbite, I'm going to bring in a spirit of love and compassion that's going to make you a witness for the kingdom of God. And when you see your brothers and sisters struggling, the love that's in you that is coming from above is going to make you want to reach out and help them from their dark places from, amen, their low places from, amen, their broken places and help them to get back and then to a God that can deliver and make them whole again. Somebody give God some praise. Yes, we now must realize it's not just about knowing the doctrine. It's not just about doing and then performing the task of doing ministry. It's not just about being in the house and in the midst of the congregation. It's not just amen, wearing the clothes that make you look holy and Praise our God, sanctify. But God is saying there is much more. I'm looking at the very intent of your heart. I'm looking at the very quality of your worship and service. I am looking at your motives and what pushes you forward in the Lord. Uh, the reason why many of us have given up on the Lord is because we have forgotten why we are here. Uh, we have forgotten why we praise him. And then we have forgotten why uh, we come together in unity as the body of Christ. Uh, we have forgotten that it is our calling uh, to minister and to witness to those that are hurting uh, and those that have no closeness or connection uh, with God. We are supposed to stand in the gap uh, for humanity that is still struggling uh, with their sins and show them that God loves them in spite of their condition. We are the light of the world. We are the city that is set on a hill that cannot be hid. We are the ones amen, that root out uh, those things in the midst. We give God room through our praise. Amen. To root out of our midst the hatred. Praise our God in the jealousy and the envy and the strife and the fear that grips our lives. We give room and create an atmosphere that says, Lord, come on down and have your way in our midst. We create an atmosphere of praise and of worship and that says, Lord, you are king of my life. You are king in our service. You are Lord over all. And because you are Lord over all, we want you to fill us with your presence. And when your presence fills the house, every demonic spirit amen, that is troubling us is going to be sent to a flight. Every habitual thing, substance that I'm struggling with, when I create the right atmosphere, it's going to cause that habitual situation amen, to come under subjection to the rule of Jesus Christ. And so I can't do it by myself. And Jesus is saying, I'm looking at you. Uh, you know how to do church, but you can't be the church if you are not connected to the head. If you don't have a relationship with the Christ, you won't be ready to meet me when I come 
come if you don't have relationship with the Christ you will have the spirit of God abiding in you so when I make the cry and the trumpet is blown you won't have anything to quicken you and change you into the being that I would ordained for you to be when you meet me in the middle of the air you have to be filled with my spirit because they that are led by the spirit of God they are the sons of God those that are filled with the Holy Ghost those that are walking with the king they have been sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise anybody in here know that you will seal anybody in here know that you will wash in the blood of the Lamb anybody in here glad about the fact that he saves you from your lowest place I'm not here to judge you but I'm here to tell you that there is a righteous judge that's going to judge all men at that day and you want to be ready to meet him when he comes how do I do that pastor the Lord says I want you to remember this that I'm watching you Ephesus I see your structure I see that you know how to do church I know that you understand how to live it out and even to identify those that are not operating in truth but I want you to remember that you have forgotten your passion you've lost your passion and your drive and then for this relationship that you are in with me I'm first you can't put this second you can't put me third I'm first in your life and when I'm first I'm going to bless you when you go out and when I'm first I'm going to bless you when you come in and when I'm first I'm going to bless you when you rise up in the morning and I'll bless you when you lay down at night and even if death should come your way then you said yay though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil and so even if you're in the midst of the shadow of death God said if I'm first I'm going to give you courage I'm going to give you success because even when this life is over I'm promising you eternal life anybody glad that you got eternal life with the Christ if you want it Jesus said what you need to do is you need to repent first you have to look and remember where you fell from you need to remember how I delivered you the first time you need to remember how I came in when you were operating hallelujah in sin when you were walking after the lust of your flesh when you were serving idol gods when you were raising up your hands the things that were earthly but I want you to remember that I came and delivered you and broke your shackles I healed you from the inside out I made you over again I washed you in my blood and when I washed you I made you an heir to the throne of glory if you can remember what I did for you then and repent and turn back to me again. I'm gonna do it again. Somebody tell me hallelujah. In other words, I'm gonna give you another chance. I know you messed up. I know the enemy pillaged up your camp. But I'm giving you the right to go back and take your blessing back again. Get your blessing from the enemy and come on and live a holy life. Come on back and let me bless you. Hallelujah. And set 
you on a sure foundation. Anybody want to give him praise? Because he is a God that wants a relationship with you. He said, I want you to come back to your first love. I know you went out and you were uh, committing adultery and that with the world. I know you were in the world system, but I want you to know that the godly system that I have in place is going to be there for you. If you come on, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to wash you. And then I'm going to put a new robe on you. I'm going to clothe you in my righteousness. I'm going to take the filthy rags from where you were. I'm going to cast them off of you. And I'm going to give you a robe of white. And then you can feast on manna from heaven. You can feast on the blessings of Zion. Matter of fact, he said, I'm going to let you eat of the tree of life. Somebody tell them hallelujah. Oh yes, I'm going to let you, amen, praise our God, eat from the tree of life that's in the midst of the paradise of God. In other words, when we started out in humanity, there was a garden of Eden, and in the garden of Eden, there was a tree of life. Ah, oh, God, but because of sin, God took man and put him out of the garden, and we lost relationship with Christ. We were separated from God. But I want you to know that God always had a plan in place. We clothed him in the color of animal skin. He said, don't worry because there is a seed of the woman that's going to crush and let the head of the serpent. He may use his heel, but the, the, the seed is going to be the overcomer. The seed is going to make in your life room that Christ can come in and take authority over your life and give you back the proper headship in your life. Somebody tell me hallelujah. I don't have to let Satan be the head of my life. I'm going to make room so Jesus can come down and take control and be the head and the authority of my life. Because when Jesus is at the head, I know that if I put him first, I can seek him first and then everything else I need is going to be added unto me. Somebody tell me hallelujah. And this tree that was in the beginning, our God had to hide it from us. He took it away so that we would live forever in our sinful state. But when you look in the book of Revelations at the end, praise God. Amen. The tree of life, hallelujah, is revealed again. Amen. The tree of life is placed back in the paradise of God. And now we that have been washed from our iniquities, and then we, and then that have been attached to Christ through the Holy Ghost, will now have access to the tree of life again. But I'm already living in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. I'm not living as one that has no hope. I have hope already. And the hope is one day I'm getting out of here and I'm going to be with the Lord. Hallelujah. Why? Because I built a relationship with the Christ and I haven't forgotten that he has to be first in my life listen the Lord wants to be first and when he is first all these little trivial matters that we are struggling with will fade because Christ 
become so great in our lives and in our focus until our troubles and our problems began to dissolve and move away. When Christ is in his right place, you can come to church and be excited. When Christ is in his right place, you can open up your mouth and praise him like you should. You can clap your hands and shout out to God with a voice of triumph because you know that he has set you free. That he has made you an heir to his throne. So the more I learn about him, the more I love him. Yes, I may be frail, and I may be in the flesh, but I have a God that is strong, that never fails, and that will overcome this world. Because he overcame this world, he said, now you can overcome it. Thank you, Jesus. You can overcome it. Because he has given you the ability to do the power of the Holy Ghost. For you that are here today, that for some reason have allowed your fire and your love for God and your passion for God to dry and to run out. Now you're in sleep mode. Resting on what it used to be. And not allowing God to do something now in your life. I encourage you to get oil in your vessel. Make sure that your lamps, your life is trimmed and burning. That you are living it out daily. So that people can look at your life and see that God is first. You may not believe it, but people know when you are living for God and that you really love Him. Because there will be something about you that is different than everybody else. I don't understand, but it just seems like they can make it through the storms a little better. It looked like things just work in their favor. Maybe they're not even financially rich, but they just seem to be rich. Yeah. In love, rich. In fellowship, rich. Yeah. In peace. Peace of mind. Why? Because I'm not resting on my own strength. I'm not leaning to my own understanding, but in all of my ways. I'm acknowledging God so that he can direct my path. Saints, I'm encouraging you today. Friends and family online, I'm encouraging you today. As we bring this message to a close, you need to remember to build your relationship with Christ. Because when it all is done and said and over, only what you do for Christ is going to last. Don't start off well and then allow the world to hit you. Don't start off well and allow things to drown out your passion and your love for God and the voice of God speaking to you. When God is speaking to you, just be like Samuel. Yes, Lord. Your servant is right here. I hear you. There's breath in your body. God has spared you for this hour. Because you have this moment, don't let it pass you by. Surrender your life to Him. What do I do, Pastor? Repent. Acknowledge the fact that you need Him, that you. That you need him to change your life. That you're ready to turn from the things that transgress against his laws and his word. That you're ready to turn to him.
submit to his word and yield to his word. And then he says, then be baptized into Jesus Christ by water baptism. Then I will baptize you in the Holy Ghost. But all you have to do is believe me. And understand that you need me because I'm the creator of all things. The giver of every good gift. Anybody know that he knows how to do good things? He loves you that much. If you don't know, come and see. Come, taste of his goodness. Learn of him. Learn how much he has done so that you may live a life of joy and peace. Come on, stand to your feet. May God bless you. May heaven continue to smile upon you. May God prepare you for his coming and return. It is our prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now for those of you that have come